Now that we have an understanding of UVs that we discussed in the previous video, let's go ahead and do a little UV mapping on our sword so we can get the textures to appear correctly on this new object that we've created. So first thing, let's go ahead and drag this off to the left a little bit and assign our testing UV texture to it. So select your object, right click, go ahead and go down to assign new material, release, select your Lambert, and next to color, we're gonna go ahead and select the checker box select file and we're going to assign our UV testing texture by clicking this folder next to image name and go ahead and click open. Then we want to press six on our keyboard so we can see the texture on it. Now I'm actually going to zoom in real fast just to show you. This is very deformed and that's because we've manipulated the initial box and we have deformed these faces but the box is still laid out in the UV map the same as it was when we initially created the box. The faces, when we change faces on our object, the face shape in the UV map does not coincide in changes. You have to change one and uh, then change the other. So that's why you have to do UV mapping. I'm gonna go up to edit UVs and just show you what I'm talking about. Open up the UV texture editor. And again, that's edit UVs, UV texture editor. I'm gonna select the sword and show you exactly what I mean by that. Here you can see this is our initial box. It's this upside down T. Now imagine if you were painting this sword, you had to paint a texture here so it would show up on these 3D faces. That would be impossible to paint this because again, we've reshaped these faces, but we never reshaped the faces in our UV map. They don't coincide and change. You have to do one, then you have to do the other. And typically the way it works is first you do your modeling, then you do your UV mapping. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can quickly set all these faces up. Now it's not gonna be ideal. We're gonna use automatic mapping for starters to just get a basic idea of how this sword should be laid out in the UV map. So in order to do that, it's very quick, very simple to do. We're just gonna come up here to create UVs with our object selected. And we're gonna come down to automatic mapping and we're gonna select this little box next to automatic mapping to bring up the automatic mapping options. Now we have to set our planes. There are various options. You could do eight planes, 12 planes, and so on. Now planes is kind of telling you which direction do you wanna do a projection from. Now the way a projection works is like this. All right, let's say I wanted to lay these faces out in this direction, okay? So it looked flat like it is here, but on my 2D texture. What it does is it takes this plane and it says, okay, this would be the Z plane. And it would take a picture of this from that angle, but this isn't just the Z plane, this is the Z plus plane, all right? So from the Z plus, looking at it from this direction, that would lay these faces out flat, facing up on our 2D texture. And again, on the back side, remember this is Z plus because it's plus, it's going in that direction. You can always look here for your plus negative and then everything behind this Z is the Z negative. So it would also take a picture from here. And the way this works, again, is it's like a box. You have a Y and another Y, then you have an X and another X plane, and you have a Z, which would be in front of it and behind it. Now. That'll make a lot more sense here in just a second when we actually project. I just wanted to lay that out for a second. So optimize for fewer pieces and go ahead and select insert projection before deformers. And I'm just going to scroll down a little bit just to show you we want the shell layout to be into square scale mode, uniform shell stacking bounding box. These are just default settings. Yours should be the same. If they are not, go ahead and change them to match that of which I have here. And once you have all these settings set up with planes at six, go ahead and click project. Now you can see what's happened here is it has created six planes in our 3D space. And these you can kind of think of like cameras. It said it's taken a picture from the Z positive, from the Z negative, from the X positive, X negative. And it's looked, each one of these planes has looked at the face of the object and it's decided, okay, which direction is this face most likely pointed towards? And it said, okay, if this is most likely facing that direction, then this plane is going to take a picture of it and lay it out flat here. 
So that's all it did. It's just being very smart, kind of deciding which direction it should take a picture of the faces from. Essentially, what it's done is it's determined which direction each face of the object is pointing towards, you know, which is the probable direction. And then it's laid that out flat based on that planar direction. So if we take a look here in our UV map, one of the great things about automatic mapping is it's done all this automatically. We can select off the object and kind of just look, it's flattened everything out. Everything looks really good. And you would think, okay, that's all there is to it. I can go about my day. But unfortunately, the world is not that perfect. And we have to do a little modification to this through a series of planar mappings, cuts, and unfolds, which we'll be covering very shortly. So as you can see, it's laid out our blade very flat. You can see it's flat, but there are problems. So if I zoom in here, and for instance, we look at the ball. I think if you were trying to texture this in a program like Photoshop or GIMP, this ball would be almost impossible to just texture. The only way this would be effective is if you were actually planning on painting in the 3D program. And even then, you'd probably have problems with texture seams, which is something we'll probably discuss a little more in depth in the future. So this ball will need to be fixed on both sides. And again, we can take a look at certain other little parts like the handle, this part right here. If I were to select these faces, that's these faces here. You can see that there's gaps and there's no need for that because we could planar map this, cut it and then unfold it so it's one solid square. And then we just have to paint that one solid square. It'd be a lot easier to texture. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at how we can use planar mapping to fix the issues that are often created with automatic mapping. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com.